start out by doing some thumbnail sketches, usually the size of a business card, and I begin to do some loose ideas. And at this point, I'm trying to wake up my brain, get the thought process going. So then I continue to do some more thumbnail sketches until I'm ready. I feel warmed up and ready to go to the next step. And the next step is the concept sketch. And I have a sample here, if I can grab it. Um, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Uh, and, and the sketch here is, is an idea that I had. Uh, this is 24 years old now, uh, but an idea that I had uh, to make a painting. And so those are the first two steps, uh, thumbnail sketches and a concept sketch. And that's, those are the two steps to get you to a painting. Mixed media. Uh, the mediums that I use are pencil, acrylic paint, and pencil. Uh, the process is to do a full value drawing with the graphite and get all the details in there. Uh, then once you have the full value drawing all set, then we come in with the acrylic paint. And the way I apply the acrylic paint is through an airbrush. And uh, I'll add color and until it, it gets almost dark and, and I, but I can still see my drawing underneath and then it's a little fuzzy on the edges so then um, and move on to the, the, the final step which is uh, pencil this time it's colored pencil and this helps me pull out some more details and, and uh, some highlights and sharpen the edges uh, it's a technique that uh, that really suits me and helps me to uh, do the paintings that I always wanted to do. I work with illustration board and um, that's what I use to do my paintings. So to prepare the, the surface, I actually first start by brushing water, soaking water on the back side of the illustration board. Uh, I use a big brush and I just uh, brush water on there and then I flip it over and then I apply a, uh, uh, some gray gesso and I just brush it on onto the surface of the illustration board. And once that's all covered, I let it dry for about an hour and then I come back and I apply a second coat and the same thing. Just uh, brush it on all over and then let it dry for another hour. And then I take another coat, uh, and the third coat, the same thing. Uh, but this time I let it dry for a day or two. I usually let it dry for two days. It, 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 it'll harden enough and it'll give you a nice uh, surface to draw on. And that's how I prepare the illustration board to receive the graphite. <laughs> three teachers in high school that encouraged me to pursue the art. The first one was Mr. Brady, the second Mr. Wozniak, and the third Mrs. Lassiter. I transferred to uh, Bell Gardens High School my junior year and Mr. Brady was my art teacher and uh, I didn't have a sixth period, I uh, only had five periods and so uh, the students that uh, where I grew up in the City of Commerce, we didn't have a high school, so we were bused to Bell Gardens. And, uh, and that uh, later that week I was uh, waiting, uh, and it was the sixth period and I didn't, uh, just uh, didn't know where to go. So I stood by the uh, classroom and all of a sudden Mr. Brady comes by and he asks, what are you doing standing in the classroom? There's no uh, class going on right now. And I told him I didn't have a sixth period um, waiting for the bus uh, so that I can uh, hop on there and wait until we can uh, go back home. And so he opened the door um, and he said, okay, go on in there and, and create some art and I'll be right back. And so he left me there by myself. <laughs> so I was just uh, doodling and, and not knowing what to do. Uh, just kind of um, sketched out different things and, and uh, to kill the time. 
And so by the time the sixth period was over, uh, Mr. Brady uh, came in and he says, okay, you now have a sixth period class and you are in the independent study class. And I asked him, so who are the other students? And he told me, uh, just one, and that's you. And so uh, I was the privilege to be an independent study uh, uh, student there uh, for the arts. So uh, it was really nice that uh, he allowed me to have that class. The second teacher, Mr. Wozniak, he was my social studies teacher. And um, he came into my art class one day and uh, he was looking at all the students uh, doing their work and, and um, went around and, and, and stopped at everyone and looked at everyone's work. And then he finally stopped at my table. And then he said to me, I was told that you were the one I must talk to. And I looked up at him and said, uh, about what? And so it uh, turns out that he had a publishing company and he was looking to, to uh, hire a, a student uh, artist. Uh, and so uh, I think Mr. Brady uh, gave him the inkling to, to talk to me uh, about that. So uh, uh, Mr. Wozniak uh, uh, took me to uh, Aaron Brothers, bought me some supplies and I, I created a, a book cover for him. Mind you, we didn't have any Photoshop back then, so everything was hand-drawn. I did the, all the lettering and the uh, topography by hand. And so after that experience, I, I, I began to really think about maybe going into graphic design. Uh, and so uh, that was the beginnings of really being encouraged to pursue the art. third teacher to give me encouragement to pursue the art was Mrs. Lassiter and she was a wonderful lady a wonderful teacher she encouraged not only me but every one of her students to participate in exhibits show your work no matter what level you were at what their skill level was uh, she just had that heart a big heart to and, and loved her her students and uh, one day she uh, invited me or she, uh, myself and another student to go on a trip to uh, California Institute of the Arts and that's up there in Valencia near uh, uh, Magic Mountain and so uh, we went and uh, looked at the the school and, and she told us her son uh, who was also in the, in the into the arts uh, was going to be attending there in the fall. So, uh, we, we both graduated uh, uh, the same year in 1975. Uh, he graduated from Whittier High, I graduated from Bell Gardens. Um, and so some years later, uh, about uh, 2005, I got a call from my social studies teacher, Mr. Wozniak, and uh, he, he told me that, uh, that uh, Mrs. Lasseter had passed. So we went to the, the funeral services uh, at Rose Hills Memorial Park. We were walking up the steps to one of the chapels there where the services was going to be held. And I, I saw her son and uh, shook his hand and gave him my condolences. And then I told him, my name is Jose Rodriguez. I was a student of your mom's at Bell Gardens. And he just opened up his eyes. His eyes were got right open, he dropped his jaw and he said, Mom always used to talk about you. And it, it kind of hit my heart because uh, uh, she used to talk to uh, me about her son the same way <laughs> she used to always talk about her son. And, and to hear that, that uh, he got the same treatment that uh, she always t uh, used to talk about me it was just a, a touching moment uh, and it turns out that, uh, that her son is John Lasseter, uh, animator and uh, of uh, Toy Stories, Bugs Life, Cars, um, a talented uh, uh, animator and award-winning, Academy Award-winning uh, animator and 
that that's my story too, too about Mrs. Lasser. She was a, a true uh, beautiful soul and is well missed. There were three artists that influenced me uh, throughout my life. And uh, number one, Norman Rockwell. Number two, Richard Amzell. And number three, Drew Suzanne. In 1985, I had an opportunity to, uh, to go on a week-long workshop in Lake Arrowhead and uh, given by Drew Struzan. At the time, he was living at uh, Lake Arrowhead and so I didn't know how this was going to work, but I think it was a first come, first serve uh, basis. And uh, I was lucky enough to be one of those 25 that they selected. Uh, so it was a really interesting week. Uh, I was a no leaguer amongst big leaguers. And, but when I came home down from uh, Lake Arrowhead, I was on fire. I was inspired and it just my work improved but just to be able to listen to their stories and uh, and get to know them a little bit uh, was a, a good shot in the arm for me if it's for a client and their eyes light up then i know i've nailed it on the other hand sometimes it takes a while to get that good result um, sometimes the, the clients don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want. And there begins a, uh, another, uh, it's like a treasure hunt, uh, a series of questions and uh, having to listen to what their story is all about and what they want as a result. Uh, therefore, uh, it's always a challenge, but at the end, it's always a great moment to have achieved their outcome. Let me think. Memorable projects. Uh, yes, there are three that, I, that come to mind. Number one is a book uh, written by my former uh, social studies teacher, uh, Mr. Wozniak, and I believe in 2004, he contracted me to design a book cover uh, for a story about a ball player who played with the Dodgers and then sent off to Vietnam. Uh, the book was called Lost in the Sun. And uh, it was a really uh, interesting book uh, to illustrate. And uh, I submitted the, uh, the artwork to an uh, international uh, uh, awards uh, competition it was from uh, portfolios.com. It was uh, uh, like a website based for uh, for artists. And so, lo and behold, uh, the cover of uh, Lost in the Sun uh, took a silver award in the book category. Uh, Jose and I have had the occasion to work on a publication called Lost in the Sun. And uh, the, the book uh, and the cover it's about an American hero, uh, and uh, I had contacted Jose uh, some time back, and I had mentioned to him that I was writing this book about uh, this former American hero, and if he would be able to kind of come up with some kind of uh, cover for the book. And I described the story uh, to him, and literally what he was able to do is he took the essence of the story and created all of the elements that are in the story into the cover design that you see. So literally he was able to, in, in an instant, tell uh, what hundreds of pages uh, were, were utilized for, but in that instant uh, uh, illustration, he captured everything to the story. And he has that uncanny ability to do that with any art project that he seems to work on. Anything that, that he creates, uh, oftentimes he'll capture the essence of, of whatever it is that the subject matter may be. And I know very few people that have the ability to do that. And so as a result, uh, we've been very pleased. In fact, one of the 
people that we showed uh, this to commented that not only is this an outstanding book cover, but it also was a, 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 a actual movie poster. And so right now a screenplay is being written and who knows, maybe this will become a movie poster as well. The second uh, uh, memorable uh, project, also another book, Meeting America. And uh, it was a story about a gentleman, David Ellis, who decided he was going through a belated midlife crisis. Purchased a motorcycle and a little hitch trailer and took to the road. Uh, he journaled all the people that he came across, uh, uh, stories that uh, uh, throughout the country. And, uh, and it was a really, really, it took me a year to, to complete the book, the, the illustrations. I did two covers, two different covers. Uh, I did the first cover, but then he decided to change his mind to do another, a different cover. And I did about 17, uh, between 17 and 18 uh, black and white illustrations. Uh, and they were the, uh, the intro for each chapter. Uh, it took a long time. The interesting about this, this project and why it's so memorable, uh, the day I got the project was November 5th. Uh, and I forget the year, but uh, it was the anniversary of my mom's death. She had passed uh, November 5th on uh, uh, 1999. And so, what is the, and then I finished the last piece. I turned in the last piece on November 5th the following year. So it took me actually one full year to complete the, all the illustrations. And it was a, a true delight to do that project. I feel it was my mom that, that gave me that project. So uh, that's why it's so memorable. And then the, another piece uh, that I did, and I did it for the uh, Whittier Chamber. Uh, they asked me to do a, a piece uh, to uh, commemorate the, the Whittier. And so I did a, a Corvette car and I had uh, put in some of the uh, elements that You'll see uh, like signages and, and like uh, the Whittier sign, Greenleaf sign, uh, the statue of John Greenleaf uh, Whittier is all a montage and uh, that was true, another true delight. So those were the three memorable uh, projects that I have to share with you. Hi, my name is Carol Crosby with the Whittier Chamber. I've known Jose Rodriguez for a number of years and just really pleased to appreciate his artwork and his the person that he is. A few years ago, we hired him to create something for the front of our business directory, which is distributed throughout all of Whittier. And we wanted really to represent what Whittier is, both past and present. And he came up with this concept and we absolutely loved it. We used it on the front of our business directory. We used it on t-shirts that we gave to our board, which were highly sought after. And of course, we have this beautiful piece of artwork that we hang in the Whittier Chamber office. What I love about Jose's artwork is it really inspires you to feel something and he really takes it personally and his detail is just impeccable. Jose is an extremely talented artist and we are pleased to be in partnership with him.